Welcome to mathematics class. In this video, I'll be talking about partial fraction. Suppose you are given uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, right? And you are asked to ask this together. You are asked to add it together. The first thing is that you are going to find the FCM, right? You find the FCM of this, and the FCM is going to be the product of this, which is 6, right? Then 2 goes out, this 3 is to be 3, plus this is actually oh, 3 goes in 6. That's 2, right? Then 2 plus 1 over 1, that's 2. Right? Here you have it to go 5 over 6, right? So, what actually happens is that since you're having 5 over 6 here, if you're asked to resolve into partial fraction, moving from this side, from this side to this side, right? That means you are, you are adding two smaller fractions together to give you a higher fraction, right? But if you are going from this side to this side, that means you are splitting a single fraction into what its smaller constituent. And that's just what is known as partial fraction. In partial fraction, you are going to you are going to be asked to resolve a fraction in an algebraic form into its simplest constituent. For example, suppose you are given 2x plus 1 divided by what? x plus 1 into bracket x plus 2, right? But before that, this is actually the factor of the denominator that you are having. Let's say we have something like 2x plus 1, right? And we have something to be x squared plus 2x plus 3, exactly, something like this. What actually happens here is that you can resolve this algebra fraction into its smaller constituents, and that is known as partial fraction. It's just the act of resolving a single fraction into its smaller constituent. And we have five forms of partial fraction. The first form that we have is actually the non-repeated non -repeated linear partial fraction. Linear partial fraction. So in the case of non-repeated linear partial fraction, you are going to have the denominator. We are going to have the denominator to be non-repeated and it will be in form of linear form. Generally, whenever we want to classify partial fraction, we classify partial fraction based on the denominator. So, to give an example of non-repeated linear partial fraction in this case, we are going to have, suppose we have something like this, we have 2x, right, divided by 2x plus 1, right? In this case, what do you think? We will check the power of x at the denominator size. The power of x is actually equal to 1. And since 2x plus 1 is actually a linear equation, right? So it shows that this is actually non-repeated and linear partial fraction. According to polynomial, if you have a polynomial of degree 1, right? That is said to be what? Linear, right? If you have a polynomial of degree 2, it is said to be what? To be quadratic. Quadratic, right? And if you have a polynomial of degree 3, that's what? That's cubic. If you have of degree 4, that's what, that's, uh, I think that's quartic, exactly. And we have of degree 5, that's quintic, right, and so on. So one major thing that you need to understand here is that as far as polynomial of degree 1 is concerned, it is known as linear equation, and polynomial of degree 2, it is known as quadratic equation, right? So in this case, are you going to resolve into partial fraction? If you check the power of the numerator here and the power of the denominator here, they are the same. So you can simply perform a long division. So, let's, let me just give you a proper example for this. Let's say we have our function f of x, right, divided by s plus 1, exactly. So, in this case, you are asked to resolve this into partial fraction. It's very simple, right? So, you can have it like this, x plus 1, or you have another x plus 2 here. So, you can also resolve this into, into partial fraction. So, in this case, this is actually non-repeated, but what? But linear partial fraction. It is a non repeated and at the same time it is a linear partial fraction. So in, the, in that case, the numerator is going to be constant. The power of x at the, at the numerator they are going to use will be constant. What I mean is that you are going to have your function f of x divided by x plus 1 into bracket x plus 1 plus 2 to be equal to a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 2. So whenever you have a linear at the denominator side, 
the numerator is going to carry a constant, the one of x is power 0. Check it now. So that's just it. So now let's move to the second case that we can have. The second form that we can have here, we have repeated. Repeated non-linear partial fraction. We have the case of repeated non-linear partial fraction. So let's say example here will be f of x divided by, since it is repeated, I can have it to be x plus 2 or square. So it is a non-linear. Let, let me just put x square here. Looking at this, we have it all what all square. So in this case, it's so that it is what it is repeated non-linear partial fraction because the denominator here is non-linear. So here is going to be a since it is a quadratic. That will be a x plus what plus b divided by what you are going to have it to be x square plus two. That is the first one. Then plus this one will be raised to the power of what of one. Then plus again you are going to have it to be c x plus d divided by what that is s square plus 2 or square so check it this is 1 and this is 2 if you have it x square plus 2 raised to power 0 that's actually what 1 right so it says that that one has no value so now let's move to the next one non-repeated non-repeated i think i've mentioned linear earlier non-repeated and also non-linear we can have it like that non-linear party of fraction so the case of non-repeated non-linear partial fraction, you're going to have it to be f of x equals to f of x divided by rather divided by let me just say 4x squared plus 6. Close brackets, you have other brackets, 3x squared plus 5. You can have it like this, right? So in this case, if you check it very well, this is actually non-linear equation. This is non-linear equation, it is a quadratic equation, right? So now look at this now. Since it's carrying power of 2, that's a quadratic, right? So here you're going to have it to be ax plus b you understand that so in simple terms whenever you have quadratic the denominator is quadratic then the numerator will be what? linear the power of x will be one whenever the denominator is cubic the numerator will be quadratic whenever the denominator is quartic then the numerator will be what? cubic so when the when the denominator is linear we take our numerator to be what constant Exactly, that's x is power 0. So here you're going to have to be ax plus b divided by what? 4x squared plus 6, right? Then plus again, you're going to have it to be that's a cx plus d divided by what? That's 3x squared plus 5, right? So that's just it. So in this case, now it is non repeated and also non linear. If we are talking about repeated, the power is what we are we will always take into consideration. If the power of, of uh, the everything here is actually 2, I'm going to repeat it twice. If it is three, I'll repeat it what? Tries. So now let's check the next example that we have. Repeated linear partial fraction. It's very simple. The first one is non-repeated linear partial fraction. The second one is repeated non-linear partial fraction. The third one is non-repeated linear partial fraction. Why the first one is repeated linear partial fraction? So in repeated linear partial fraction, you are going to have it to be function f of x divided by what? You can have it to be divided by, let me just say, uh, x minus 2 or square. If you look at this case very well, what is at the denominator side is actually a linear, a linear, it is linear. And you are having the power or square. So you are going to repeat this word twice. So here you are going to have to be a over s plus s minus 2, right? Then plus b over x minus 2 or square. So here this is 1 and this is what 2. You repeat it twice. So that's just it. So the last case that you can have is the case of the fifth case. And fifth case is known as the improper. Improper. Improper partial fraction. According to the case of improper partial fraction, what happens here is that whenever you are given the whenever you are given any partial fraction and it, it is in form of improper partial fraction, first thing you need to consider is that we have numerator and we have denominator, right? So let's say the power of x in the denominator is s raised to power 2. And in the, numer in the numerator is s raised to power 2, and in the denominator it is x raised to power 2. So they are having the same power. In this kind of case, you perform what? You perform long division. Right? Then let's say you have your numerator to be x raised to power 3, and you have your denominator to be x raised to power 2. In this case, you perform what? Long division. 
right? So let's say you have s is power 3 and also s is power 1. In this case, you perform what? The same thing. That's what? Long division. So what actually happens is that whenever you have a fraction in which the power of the numerator is greater than the power of the denominator, you are going to perform long division. And that case, that kind of fraction is known as what? Improper partial fraction. If you find this helpful, make sure you click on the solution button and do well to click on the notion button as well.